Hi. Hi. Welcome to Why Are We Like This, a Heart Stopper podcast. I'm Ashley, she, her. And I'm Alyssa, she, they. And today we have a very special music bonus episode. Woohoo! And we have two amazing guests with us today. We have dear friend and creator of our theme song. Hi, I'm Cass, uh, she, her. I also uh, respond to Hey Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have um friend of the pod uh nicolette she her welcome 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 we love you love you guys so much <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah we're here to talk today about the music of Heartstopper. but first off since this is y'all's first appearance can you tell us a bit about how you found Heartstopper and like what it means to you um so basically what happened to me was i was on social media and a lot of my friends were just being like, Heartstopper is so cute. It's so wonderful. Everyone <laughs> should watch it. And I'm one of those people that when something's really popular, I like won't watch it at the same time <laughs> as everyone else. I'll wait a little bit and then I'll sort of like be like, eh, maybe I should watch this. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I won't like it. And then one day it'll just like pop up in my head like, mm, let's just let's give it a try. And when I tell you (laughs) after the first episode, I was like, what happens next? Mm -hmm. I sat down on my bed for what it's eight episodes. So that's like four hours, Mm -hmm. four hours straight, no food, no water, (laughs) no bathroom. I was like, I, and then I finished it and I was like, Oh my God, that's so good. (laughs) And like that was it. I was I was hooked, hooked. One sitting for a season. Same. And I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Have done, will do. Yeah. Perpetual state of existence. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, no, really, it's gotta be rewatch, reread, rewatch, reread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. See, unlike you two, I have not read the comics yet. <gasps> um, but- I'm so sorry. It's okay. I've read some of them. I'm just more <laughs> jealous than anything, like to be able to reread it all for the first time. And especially now that the hiatus is ending and yeah. you'll be able to, to like have the new updates and yeah. not be waiting for a mm-hmm. year. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about you, Cass? So uh, you already know the answer to this, actually, <laughs> but I will tell everyone else. Um, Ashley is the one who told me about Heartstopper. Um, I was dog sitting slash house sitting for my dad and my stepmom, and I was having a really, really rough time. Um, it was just a lot. Uh, my dog had cancer and like, then their dog that were like stressing me out, I was stressing out. I wasn't really sleeping more than like two, three hours without having to get up and let her out to go to the bathroom and it was just, I was super duper stressed. And Ashley was like, watch heart start, but it'll make you feel better. <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right, all right. So then it's like late. I forget what time it was, but I, I, I think I got through maybe like half of it. And I was like, okay, I have to go to sleep at some point. And then I think I finished the rest the next day. And then just immediately, once I got to the end of the last episode started at the beginning again, because it was just like a, I, I, oh, it was such a great stress reliever and I I needed it. Like I think that I got it at the perfect time when it I absolutely just had to have something. So it was a huge, huge dopamine spike when I absolutely needed it the most. So thank you, Ashley. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I'm forever grateful. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just stoked now for season two and yeah. Give us the trailer, you cowards. <laughs> <laughs> they Please. know what they're doing. They know. <laughs> they know. Okay, so uh, Cass, do you want to yes. talk a little bit about our theme song? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, so Ashley approached me and asked, hey, um, you're starting to do this whole music production thing. Do you want to make our theme song and I was like hell yeah I do <laughs> um it, it was my first time and only time uh thus far creating music for other people so like so far I just kind of noodle around and 
make whatever I want for myself. Um, so this was a challenge because I was like, okay, I have to meet a certain certain expectation, right? Like Ashley had told me, okay, well, we want it to be like really upbeat and, you know, have this this type of vibe. And so my starting place, honestly, the short version <laughs> of how I made it was I basically just ripped Baby Queen. <laughs> um I, I I started with Wami. So I started there where I just like listened to that a lot and just paused and like rewound just five, 10 seconds and then kind of just got like the basic layout of how I wanted to structure it. And then I tweaked things here and there. So it's not the exact same melody. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to make it because that's like sort of the theme song of of the yeah. entire show. right? Yeah. So it made sense to use that and just tweak a little bit mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. what i did it was wow. super fun we love it didn't it. take me nearly as long as a whole song does oh, <laughs> thank you. but it was it was very much an enjoyable process i i liked it a lot thank you for doing it for us and i know You're that welcome. we usually like talk we talk over it in the beginning and then we talk over it in the end so i'm just gonna play it in full just so people could hear it like without <laughs> us talking over it oh super fun just like a little dance break yeah i love the mm -hmm. end the end is one of my favorite parts yeah the way that it fades out mm -hmm. and also like you i we had talked about want me and like i guess i just like hadn't really paid that much attention to like the back the back tracks of it and so like when mm -hmm. i first heard mm -hmm. it like of course the clap at the beginning of the like mm -hmm. i was like okay yeah and then i was like but i don't I can't really place like the other parts. And then I listened to want me and I heard it and I was like, oh, I've mm -hmm. never heard this beat before. Like, and I've listened to that song a yeah. hundred times. So yeah. When you're specifically listening for something yeah. then you're, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now I hear that part or whatever, you know, um, it's super fun. Um, but I also, it was nice because I learned things like how to do certain things in the process of making this because I wanted to do that do where it like goes up an octave it's like that that pitch uh -huh. bend and I I was like how do I get it to do that <laughs> and then I finally figured it out and I was like all right <laughs> and now I can use that in the future because now I know how to do it and I can use it in my own stuff if I want to have a Hell whole yeah. octave or more or less or whatever of a pitch bend so it's very fun yeah by the way um Cass is a super talented singer and music maker oh, and you should promote your youtube channel so people can go listen to your stuff okay <laughs> you <make you> <laughs> um right now it's just covers because i haven't actually released any of my original music uh, my channel's called chorus cat it's c-o-r-u-s-c-a-t so it's from the the word coruscate, which means to like glitter, shine, hmm. uh, essentially, hmm. and I it's like that. a version. But thank you. Sort of like a different, old, timey, different way to say that word or something. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. remember exactly, but I found it and I was like, ah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> just go to YouTube and then just put that in. You'll find me. We'll link it too. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay, do you want to ask your beat question? Yes, I do. <laughs> so, are you beat people or lyric people? Because I feel like there are more lyric people whenever I ask this question than beat people. And I'm curious. Beat. Yeah. <laughs> beat. 100% beat. Like, um, in college, I... Um, I would like listen to a song and from like the first note or like the first like little drum, like da da da, like I would know the song. And one of my friends from college was like, you should go on beat Shazam. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. It's like this 
like late night game show where you play like five seconds of a song, but it's usually like something in the middle or something. And contestants will try and guess the song before before Shazam can. Oh, that sounds yeah. interesting. You definitely should do that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I Is actually thing. I don't know, but I did stay up late one night and I ended up watching it. And I don't know like every song in the world. Mm -hmm. So obviously there were ones that I didn't know. Right, right. And I realized that as soon as I was like putting myself on the spot, my mind went blank. Um, so I don't think I like realistically I'd be able to do it. But if I was like in the comfort of my own room and wasn't put on the spot and was just doing it, I, I could do it. At least a certain percentage of songs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I probably wouldn't win, but I'd probably be like second or third. Heck yeah. <laughs> I love your realism. You're like, I'm not taking home the gold, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I can make it pretty far. <laughs> um, it's definitely a combination for me. I, it has to be both. Like if a song has good lyrics and a shitty beat, I'm probably not going to listen to it more than once and vice versa. So it has to be like a good combination. I definitely mm -hmm. lean on like the beat is what my first impression is, I guess, because if it sounds boring, I'm probably not going to listen to the lyrics. Um, but also it can have a great beat and it, and it'd be a terrible song and i'm gonna be like well yeah. <laughs> love the beat but i'm not gonna keep listening to this so yeah it's it's very similar to ashley for me so i it, it's context dependent as well of like why am i listening to this song because like if i'm like in the mood for like something really sad that i can cry to it's definitely more lyric based but like if i need to like just like dance around and get my energy out that's more beat based um, and I was thinking about it and I was like, that makes so much sense because I grew up dancing and being in choir and like, depending on the style and like, whatever it is that you're doing, like the, the lyrics are sometimes more important. The beat is sometimes more important. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of grew up where it was just like all context dependent. And so that's kind of where I'm at now is I just kind of like it's a combination of the two, but like Ashley said, like if it doesn't have like both good lyrics and a good beat, I'm probably, I, I, unlike Ashley, I'm not even going to finish the first. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just turn it off. i am like, this sucks. Skip. Mm -hmm. I, I try to listen to it at least. I'm also just a vibe person. So I'm, I'm that monster who will put like all song shuffle and just skip until I find the song that like, I'm like, yep, this is what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I do the same thing, but I myself am a beat person and I, I include melody in that as well when I say beat mm -hmm. it doesn't it's not just like the drum beat but I mean like melody so like I yes obviously good lyrics um are important but it's I think too why I enjoy k-pop so much I have no idea what they're saying or singing <laughs> about. so lyrics are secondary for me very much but then it's like, if the song is good, and then I look up the lyric translations, and those are also good, I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know, it's like gold standard for me. But I have a theory that neurodivergent people tend towards beat over lyric slightly, maybe. And I don't know. You guys can chime in on that uh, if, if you will. But uh, I mean, I know the audience can't see me, but like <laughs> my hands are like <laughs> over my face. Like yeah. I you just gave me the biggest like mind blowing <laughs> thing because like you're right. You're right. Yes. I love it makes being so right. much sense. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just like my I'm anecdotal research. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm definitely an outlier in that, but I think that because I'm such a word nerd mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm an English teacher. So like language is like literally like basically a hyperfixation for me. And mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I do like, I'll like break down lyrics and I'll be like, holy shit. And I will like analyze them like poetry for fun. <laughs> um, no, that I definitely can see that being possibly a thing um maybe that 
Ashley can be the question for this episode. Are yeah. you neurodivergent? Are you yeah. a and person or a you, lyric person? Yeah. <laughs> I, can we please? Oh, yes, that'd be awesome. Because then I can get more like sound evidence. Yeah. <laughs> One way or the other, you know, just like. Yeah. That'd be no, cool. I agree. That is that is a very good idea because now I really want to know too. <laughs> I, I know that, you know, technically this one is not going to come out like tomorrow. So I'm going to be like waiting on the edge of my seat for this. <laughs> for like a month and a half. <laughs> oh, 100 <laughs> percent. All right. Well, should we talk a little bit about the music? Um, do you want to talk about the score or the soundtrack first? Um, either one. Um, if we want to like start from the beginning and then work our way down. Yeah, through our we favorite start songs. With me. Um, yeah, <laughs> obviously. I was about to say, um, I think everyone's here. Um in their listing has want me mm-hmm. um see i just wrote literally all baby queen songs in the show <laughs> just i didn't <laughs> differentiate <laughs> i, I just whole wrote separate baby queen section <laughs> oh yes yes we have yes <laughs> i mean like want me is definitely in everyone's it has to be mm-hmm. i mean it's kind of a given um and i mean cast you even based the theme song yeah. for this podcast off of it. So I'm like, you know, it is a given. Um, I had a quote that also like, or a lyric from the song that also sort of like stuck out to me as it related to the scene mm-hmm, mm-hmm. itself. Um, I mean, there's a lyric that where she goes like, I'll go anywhere you want me. And then Ben texts Charlie and goes, can we actually meet up at lunch? Yep. <laughs> and he goes okay yeah. <laughs> yeah yes he will even if he's in a bad situation like yes he'll follow ben and they'll do whatever he wants uh charlie to do yep no matter how it makes charlie feel and i mean that's really sad my heart breaks for charlie when i think about it that way but like it's also sort of like not to connect it to buffy but you know <laughs> i'm gonna connect it to buffy um, why not you know when like You know, in almost every single episode where, like, one scene they go, like, as long as nothing bad happens or whatever, and then it jumps to a scene where something bad is happening, Mm -hmm. like, it's the same thing, pretty much. I didn't even notice that with the lyrics and then, like, that part lining up Mm -hmm. with Uh what's happening. That's really clever. Yeah. And it's, it's really the perfect song to open the series with, too, because not only is it perfect for like what we're seeing Charlie go through with Ben, but also just like this, like the sound of baby queen is very much the sound of Heartstopper, mm-hmm. And so it really like sets us off on like the right musical tone for the rest of the soundtrack and the rest of the songs that we're going to get. And I don't know. I just like, can't imagine them using yeah. anything else to open the series with yeah it's pretty perfect i mean the Mm -hmm. entire i don't know who curated the the songs for this season but they deserve a round of applause i mean just i i they did such a good job i mean there's not a single skip on here for me Um, (laughs) oh i definitely have some me too um so i just I don't know why it never occurred to me to do this until this exact moment in time, but I looked up who the music supervisor for the show was, um, and his name is Matt Biffa, and he has done, uh, he's got 118 credits, you know, in the music department. I'm just going to kind of quickly scroll through and see what stands out snatch uh music uh no music researcher uh the losers who's a executive music producer and music consultant which if you've never seen that movie it's kind of ridiculous and super fun highly recommend the dirk Lee's holistic detective agency which um elijah wood was in uh-huh. um, but he was the music supervisor on that you guys couldn't see it, but Nicolette's jaw dropped when you yes. said that. <laughs> I did yeah. watch a couple of episodes of that, and that was a delightful show. Dirk Gently. I want to pick. Yes. 
And that, so it looks like he's been doing a lot of stuff for Netflix recently too, because he did the end of the fucking world. He did yeah. um, sex education. Ooh. He did. I think this is Hulu, but one of us is lying, which is an adaptation of a Karen McManus YA mystery series. Yeah. He's doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> and he's doing it well. Doing it mm-hmm. well. Yeah. I can't, of the things that I have seen, I cannot call the like music to mind, but I'm sure it's great. I mean, Sex Education yeah. has a good soundtrack. Mm. I, I can't remember the music in The End of the Fucking World, but that was a good show too. Yeah, I agree. Do we want to talk about the next one that somebody had like that they called their one of their favorites on the list? My next one is Love Sick. Does anybody have anything before that? I don't want to go to school. I exactly. Wanna... I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a perfect choice for that specific scene. And like every time it comes on, my heart starts to race a little bit because I'm like, oh, Charlie's running and Nick is falling in love. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was OK. It never like because I'm more of like a sound person, like it kind of was cute to me but it wasn't like there yeah it didn't like meet the exact stand out to me yeah Mm -hmm. like like it almost did it was almost there it's not on my short list of ones that I listen to like constantly but it's it definitely sticks out in my mind as far as like for that scene Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it does it just like it fits the vibe really well of the scene and what's going on Mm -hmm. yeah they all do a really good job of that I feel like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have anything from meat that they want to talk about? Dover Beach is in meat. Yeah, we haven't yes, finished it. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's also the next song. <laughs> <laughs> that song, I actually love that song. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. It is my it's my favorite baby queen song. Definitely. Okay. I think Colors of You is my, my favorite baby. Colors queen, of You but... is great. Mm-hmm. but dover beach is also really high up there the lyrics of dover beach are like how i feel about hard stopper like it makes <laughs> like the anytime that i'm feeling like depressed or down or anything like my brain is like you should turn on heart stopper you should read it or whatever and so th- and then i do and then i feel fine yeah but also like it's another instance of it being so fitting for the scene um mm-hmm. because like it's like the person that comes into your life and it turns into like their voice in your head that you hear like talking you down from your spirals and that makes you like push through and that's what Nick and Charlie are for each other and so Mm -hmm. it's just like and that's also like when Charlie bests Nick and giggles after and Nick says well done like that little giggle like that was the moment that Nick's entire soul like just fell so hard (laughs) and so I just it's just like oh it's so good and it makes me feel so good when I listen to it see for me that song maybe it was just because there was a lot of like one two three squeeze and like (laughs) a lot of like loud like talking and stuff going on above it but it didn't really stick out to me the first time I watched it but then when we went to the baby queen concert and I know we'll talk about this later yeah and I was like basically quote unquote like studying baby queen (laughs) that was a song of hers that really stuck out to me then and then I was like oh and this is in the show too cool (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Alyssa? Uh, I just, I, I, you guys have all said it better than I could. It's just, I, there's like a lot of, especially with Baby Queen, there is just a lot of like overlap between like what I love in the context of the show and then what I just kind of like unironically, like I just love, yeah. um, like to listen to. Like, I, Baby Queen was my like second artist of 2022. Um, we all know who number one was, <laughs> but, um, like baby queen was number two and it's because I just like, I, after I like first watched the show, I was just like her entire discography on repeat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then Taylor Swift released a new album and 
then that was on repeat. <laughs> the only yeah. reason that Taylor Swift wasn't my number one is because I was like, not again, Blondie. We're not doing this again. And you're going to come in here and you're going <laughs> to skew my results for the year. So I only listened to Midnight's on YouTube until after the wrapped came out. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah. So like for, for me, a lot of it, like just that song comes on and I get happy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yay, mm-hmm. it's over beach. And I'm like dancing around to it um during the rugby montage and also for me because I like understand nothing of what's going on I just get caught up in the song (laughs) and the cuteness of it and like the like flirtiness between Nick and Charlie and it like helps me tune out the sports of it uh Mm -hmm. I I think I think in my notes for that episode I called it the like baby queen rugby montage (laughs) nice yep Mm -hmm. Mm, apt apt name for that yeah all right. Do we want to talk about the next song that caught anybody's? I, I, um, I was going to say I, but ear. Yeah. Uh, I put Sappho on here too. Yeah. Um, Sappho. Yeah. I just, I can't explain why, but that song feels like Charlie's Room to me. Yes. And it's, so it's the classics. It's the classics. Yeah. It just thing. like, and the way that it transitions like from him playing the drums and then he goes into talking about like his backstory with Ben and we hear the drums and like just that whole mm-hmm. transition is like re- it just goes together so well and yeah that's also it's yeah. a song that like it kind of it's sneaky because I feel like I forget about it a lot and then I like watch Crush and I'm like oh shit this is really great or it'll come up on Spotify and I'm like I fucking like this song a yeah. lot it's also one of the only ones that they play in full. So like Dover Beach plays oh. in full and Sappho plays in full. Mm. Does Dance With Me play in full? They play a lot no. of it. It doesn't? No, it only does it only does like the first um oh it's so slow. Yeah. Um that they do like the first verse and then the chorus, but there's so much like um it's like I said, it's so slow that it really feels like it's Longer. everything, mm. but it's not. Mm. Yeah, I just I just glanced at the time of it and I was like, yeah, no, it's not a four minute scene. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> I would watch the four minute version of that scene, but <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. They don't yeah. have that kind of time in a 28 minute format. No. Right. <laughs> um, but dance with me was my next one. So but girls yeah. is before that. I was mm-hmm. gonna yes. say, Ashley, you're yes. skipping over girls. I didn't <laughs> put it on here because I just don't have wow. intense feelings about the way that they used it. So okay. that's fair. It's girls is one that for me is more out of context. Yeah, same. Um, I love it, but um, I mean, I there's just a part of me that's like, you have an episode called Girls. Why did you not put this song in that episode? Which is also so much more of about Tara and Darcy Mm -hmm. um and and like my one critique with it is also it's kind of weird because that montage is all from Elle's point of view yeah and so like yes it is a montage of Elle putting two and two together and realizing that Darcy and Tara are together but I'm like okay but it's like it's a great Darcy and Tara song and it's not used to its fullest potential. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I didn't put it on my show list. I mean, I put it on like my list because that is the only song that I knew going into this <laughs> show. Like the only song. Yeah. So when I heard it, I was like, oh, um, but yeah, I was like, when I first watched it, I was like, is Elle having sapphic? feelings for her classmates like I'm right. all for sapphic love I'm all for sa- obviously <laughs> I'm all for sa- <laughs> listen if I had a girlfriend I wasn't in for sapphic love um I'd I'd have some questions about myself and she'd have a lot of questions for me <laughs> so um <laughs> babe I love you that's why um so like I'm all for sapphic artists and stuff, but no, I do agree. I my mind had a really hard time computing like what actually was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I realized that it was literally just B 
because she's like, I mean, she's putting two and two together, but, you know, she doesn't have any friends at the school. So it's also like longing for that female friendship as she is now being validated as a girl. Mm -hmm. Like she, you can tell she wants it. Like, you know, when, um, when Tara says, Hey, do you want to like meet up at lunch? And then I sort of like, you see Elle in the lunchroom sort of like looking around and she doesn't really see and no one's really like saying hi to her or anything and then Darcy goes oh my god there she is and Tara goes we're over here we're over here and her face just lights up like I like I get it that like you know it's nice to have a song called girls and talking about girls while she's having these like longing feelings for female friendship and putting two and two together but yeah my my lesbian brain did not compute <laughs> what was actually going on yeah. until way later. I feel like they kind of were like, we have to put a girl in red song in yeah. this show. <laughs> yeah. And they Where picked we this it? one and they, I just, I feel like they didn't put it in the best place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fair. But it was Nicolette. You brought that up. There's, there were two songs on the soundtrack that I knew before. And it was one of the two. So I knew none of them. Yeah, I knew none of them too, and now I'm obsessed. Yeah. 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 So I don't know about you guys, but I know what my next one is. I mean, it, I mean, Dance With Me is one of my favorite moments in the entire yeah. show. I mean, it won awards for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it. I, it's it. Yeah. It won, mm-hmm. I forget where it was, it was MTV. but it won like a best like MTV like best musical moment mm-hmm. which is like such an MTV thing to have yeah. <laughs> um but I actually I told my husband I was like it's a good thing that the show came out after we got married because I would have pushed so hard <laughs> for this to be our wedding song but it's a four minute song and I would not have allowed them to cut it so I'm like you're just you're lucky <laughs> I there's two songs that I feel that way about it's it's dance with me and sweet nothings by Taylor Swift (laughs) nice Mm -hmm. nice but I I love it it's just so cute dance with me is definitely like cute and I love it feels really relevant to the scene in a lot of ways um but when I first watched it and even now I think of it as like you know the snow song like if you listen to any sort of songs in any movie or tv show that has like a scene where people are out in snow and being cute it's like ding 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 like (laughs) so this is the snow song (laughs) but it makes me happy yeah it does it makes me happy and the sound of it is like very fitting for like their emotions at the time it's very like light and airy and like innocent and pure sounding which is like just perfect for their little first uh, getting together moment. Yeah. And there's like a timidness to it as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm. Like, especially like that it's pretty fast, but this is uh-huh. what we do at parties, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. there's just this like shyness and this like, li- I mm-hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm, the word is escaping me, but there's just something about it that feels like, just like the big, it feels like a crash. It feels like, yeah, crash. it feels like yeah. taking a chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Okay. Um, everyone wants to talk about why am I like this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. That was going to be my next one. <laughs> <laughs> I know when Cass, when you were like, so is that there, there's another yeah. one we want to talk about, right? I'm like, why am I like this? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad that our, our brain waves were on the same yeah. operating level. Oh, 100%. <laughs> it's also, it's just one of the other, like, really incredible musical moments mm-hmm. in the show. Like, mm-hmm. the way that it's used, uh, it gets me every yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fitting. And, like, my note just says, yeah. Jesus Christ, knock to the heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it just hits me <laughs> so hard every time. And my last mm-hmm. note is, no further notes, because I don't want to cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... I get uh, like I have chills right now just like thinking about it like um this is another one where like I wrote down a lyric the obvious one um it's like I'm looking down from the ceiling above Above. yeah Mm -hmm. like just like imagining it being like your like inner self is sort of like looking in the mirror at like the face you've been putting on for so long and being like 
okay, but like, why? Mm -hmm. Like I said, like, I don't usually get into the lyrics until later, mostly, and I didn't mention this before, but it's mostly because I can't always understand what they're saying at first. And then I sort of like realize, but when I started to realize what was in the song, I was like, oh God, like it hit me like a, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. a truck. I was like, this is, if there was, I mean, there are a lot of the songs are really, really good and very like, you know, on brand for the scene, but this one was perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. As we keep saying, but perfect. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. My, my lyric is actually the, maybe I'm an old soul trapped in a young body. Maybe you don't really (laughs) want me there at your birthday party. I'm like, that just describes my high school and college experience Mm -hmm. in like two sentences. Like, (laughs) yeah. And I'm that anxious person. That's like, are you mad at me? Are you you mad at me? Like, (laughs) yeah. Is it okay that I came over? Like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah do you really want me here yeah Super I'll, just, I'll just be over there out of the way not <laughs> yeah. bothering anyone. I'll be in the corner <laughs> if anybody needs me yeah <laughs> thinking, thinking right, right over, over. <laughs> <laughs> Cass and I are on the same wavelength Dang. um oh <laughs> uh, it's just it's perfect it's yeah. so good and the segue into my own person is also good like that's a yes Two very fitting songs for that situation. Mm -hmm. And they both make me cry. It's another one that I can't like immediately, my own person, like I can't immediately think of like which song that is. Like if I heard it, oh yeah, 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 that one, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then like, obviously as we get into Kiss, there's a lot because of the party. But I feel like Mm -hmm. a lot of the song, I'm like looking at this list and they do kind of like blur together. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like, I mean, obviously, like the big standout is Clear as Blue. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and um, Alaska. And Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> those two are definitely on my list. And mm-hmm. they're uh-huh. so, so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Telephone stands out a little bit, but that's because of like the joke that you and I made when we watched this episode <laughs> where yeah. that song is playing and neither of them use their phones to communicate to help find each other. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, my like two thoughts when that song comes on are, is that Owl City? No, <laughs> it just sounds like Owl City. It does. And then why the fuck are neither of you texting each other? <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, that's true. I didn't include that one in like it doesn't it doesn't make me feel like a lot in the scene, but it is one of my favorite finds from the soundtrack. That yeah. song, it pumps me up. I just it pumps me up <laughs> every time I listen to it. It's like one of my driving songs. I don't know why. Yeah. I like listening to it when I'm driving. It's it's a good like vibe. It keeps me like from like fading. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's on my driving playlist twice. So I get it double. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's Claire's Blue in Alaska for me. Mm-hmm. But Alaska, yeah. specifically the Toby Green remix that's in the show. Yeah, same, same, same. Yeah. Claire's Blue obviously is just like fucking perfect for that scene. Mm-hmm. The way that they used it with the beat drop at the rainbows and everything like chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. Love a good beat drop. Oh, my yes. God. And and I do think that the fact that they kind of they had chosen that song very yes. intentionally and that they were playing it on set and so that like it's choreographed to that song as opposed to some of the other party scenes like is really important and it really helps make that moment Mm -hmm. the like like deep soul touching moment that it is yes i didn't realize they played it on set that's really Mm -hmm. cool but it makes sense because it's so synced up you know a lot of times it's like they just play something and they're like dancing and somehow Sometimes it's like the right BPM that they're dancing to, but this one was like <laughs> yeah. right on the money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this was the other song that I knew, like I had heard this song before the show. This one and uh, girls. Oh, I have like gone back and forth because I think I'd heard Clear as Blue before the show, like once or twice. Mm-hmm. But like it's it's to the point now where I genuinely don't remember. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I just it's I just all a think blur of now. it in the concept. It's all yeah, it's all heart stopper. 
um, the time before and the time after no longer exists. It's yeah, all, right. All just one. <laughs> but if I had to choose my favorite song from the party, it's Alaska. I that mm-hmm. song is so perfect, and it really helps like with the tension between the two of them because there is air in between, and just like the beat of it is like like it's it's like building you know it builds it builds mm-hmm. and then yeah and then we get the kiss scene after so yeah 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 I feel like um and this was probably I'm probably just reiterating this but and I wanted to touch on this later but I think this is the perfect time too since we're like now about halfway through not half, halfway but almost, almost halfway yeah we're on episode three yeah <laughs> yeah um what I like about a lot of these songs is like, yes, they're in specific scenes, but they don't always like exactly pertain to the exact scene mm-hmm. as what we're seeing like happen. Like they're running, but it's not a running song. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's more about like the progression of their feelings. Mm-hmm. And I'll I'll get to this when we uh, get to friend uh, to sort of like prove my point, but it really feels like a lot of them are more like progressions of their feelings in lyrics. So like, it's almost like, you know, when you've been like seeing someone and you haven't like slept with them yet, it's like, okay. So like, there's like a huge, huge buildup. It's like, mm-hmm. this is like, mm. they're almost there. It's like, we really want to, but we haven't gotten the guts to yet. But like we're going to and we want to. And that's like the mutual feelings. And sometimes these songs are like you can tell it's like the way Nick feels personally. And sometimes you can tell it's the way Charlie feels personally. But this one is very much like their mutual feelings for each other at this very second rather than running up stairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is partly why it's so successful, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, A, it's good music in general, and B, it's just paired really well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not like so on the nose, but more of like the the feeling, which is what music Mm -hmm. for me and most other people does. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else or do we want to move on to friend? Well, secret is next. Or secret. It's secret. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. (laughs) I don't have any favorite songs from Secret. That's the thing. Okay, <laughs> so there's only two songs in Secret. There's only, it's What's It Gonna Be and Heart. And like, I like What's It Gonna Be, but yeah. like, yeah. I mean, Ashley and I have already talked about how this is our least favorite episode. Uh-huh. It's, there's a lot of rugby and it's really sad. Yeah. And there's only yes. two songs in it. Only two songs. It's, it's What's It Gonna Be in Heart. Yeah, but it has my favorite yeah. song in it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't put What's It Gonna Be on my list, but I did put Heart on my list. Yo, that thing started and I was like, oh, this is the one. <laughs> ah. That's when my ears perked up for sure. Mm-hmm. That was like beat all the way. And then it's like, then I started hearing th- some of the things I like about being a beat person is like, I get to enjoy it the a song in just different stages right so it's like i listen to it several times and i mostly just hear or pay attention to like the beat and the melody yeah some lyrics especially like chorus whatever and like i start to learn the lyrics but i don't really pay attention to them until later and then it's like ah a new element that i get to be excited about you know yeah Um, but definitely that that beat it started and i was just and he's just like determined you know he's like okay i'm gonna get better and then I, I was like, yeah, you got the heart. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. And then we get to Friend, mm-hmm. which yes. also has a ton of songs in it. Yes, it does. Which also makes sense because they're at the bowling alley. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, and I love all of them. Yep. <laughs> so I didn't put it on my list because you don't really hear You don't hear it really in the mm-hmm. in the show. But Nothing Else I Could Do by Ella Jane is, like, at the very top of my freaking fine Uh list from this soundtrack. It's, like, Buzzkill, Why Am I Like This, Nothing Else I Could Do. Those are my top three. Um, It's the one that plays when they're playing Monopoly in Charlie's room. And Mm -hmm. it's just, like, in the background. So you Uh you hear a little bit of it, but not a lot. And so I didn't, didn't, it wasn't on my radar until I listened to 
the soundtrack. And then I was like, yeah, where, where did this song? Like, I don't remember this one, <laughs> you know? And, I, and I'm super obsessed with it. I play it all the time. But then we get the only Tao scene that I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Twerk, 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 twerk. Twerk. <laughs> Urban Angel 1999. Yes. Which that is a song that for me is all about the beat. And actually has now found its way onto my uh, shamelessly dancing around the kitchen playlist. Nice. Yes. <laughs> and it's, again, really good for it because it's a song. The entire song is about pining. And like, who are the royals yeah. of pining? Tell and no. Tell no. <laughs> Months of pining. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I hear that word, I just hear her voice in my head. Yeah. Like with that scene. <laughs> and then we get buzzkill. No, but before... Buzzkill, we get if you want to, and oh yeah, I, I didn't. Eva Dewey is like my second like favorite find artist from this show. Like it's Baby Queen and then Eva Dewey. Nice. Um, and like it kind of sneaks in there, but I that's yeah. a song that I really like, and I just want to give it its due because yeah. also it's like it's a very again it's like this like the progression of their relationship. They're like moving forward a little bit with it. And it's just, it's really sweet. I also just love her voice. Yeah. And then we get Buzzkill. Buzzkill. So Buzzkill, <laughs> yeah, was my number one most played song of 2022. And it just like is so very like angsty teenager vibes mm-hmm. too, which go well for the scene where we get like, you mm-hmm. know, everyone's having a good time. And then Tao's like in the background glaring at Nick. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is another one where like, and it's great that we went to a Baby Queen concert because this is another one that I didn't really hear because we're at a bowling alley. There's a yeah. lot of stuff going yeah. on. And mm-hmm. like my brain was like, I'm going to focus on the bowling and not whatever's happening yeah. in the background. Um, and then I watched Heartstopper again. And I was like, oh, huh? yeah. <laughs> It, see it was the opposite for me like I as soon as it came on in the show I was like what song is that like what who who is that I want <laughs> I want to know more about this song I remember the first time that I like clocked this song because I I was driving home from a yoga class and I was listening to the Heartstopper mixtape and it was like similar to Nicolette there was just like so much else going on in the scene that I hadn't really been paying attention to the music yet And so I was like listening to the mixtape in my car and I was trying to park (laughs) Um, and the song came on and I actually, I circled the block a couple more times just to listen to it because (laughs) you didn't just lose the space. So it was like the middle of a day on a Sunday. So everyone was gone already. Everyone was either uh, parked or weren't coming back for a while. I wasn't uh, too worried, but yes, that was my experience. And then now, like every time it comes on in the show, I'm like, buzzkill. Mm-hmm. I also hate to be a buzzkill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, maybe that's like a big a part of it for me and why it like resonated so well with me, because as I've mentioned 150 times, it was a rough fucking year yeah. last year and I was not in a good mm-hmm. place mm-hmm. and I am an anxious Ashley (laughs) I'm an anxious Ashley yes and so like in every social situation I was having to like rein myself in just like just for general anxiety about being like I didn't want to be bring people down I was trying to like you know meet everybody else's vibe and not be such a downer all the time even though I was really sad and so I think Mm -hmm. obviously the message of the song was like exactly how it was feeling when it came out so Uh... Maybe that's why it resonated so much with them. No. Yeah. Um, I want to be with you is my favorite out of everything oh, in the show. She doesn't even know. <laughs> she doesn't know. She doesn't I'm even so know. excited to tell you this, Nicolette. Oh, I no. want to be with you is the only song from the show that is directly referenced in the comic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she's lost for words <laughs> no one can see my face but i just like my eyes we broke like, nicolette my face i'm like oh my god <laughs> okay so oh wait Cass, did you want to go because this is where i was going to make my point about the no. progression of feelings 
Yeah, no, do your thing. I don't okay. have any comments other than I just really like the song. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Because I, this is my favorite one, uh, mostly because it is my speed in regards to like one of the genres I listen to. Like this is like a really, this is very much something that if I like heard it at a coffee shop or like I heard it when I was out or something, I'd be, I would like Shazam it and be like, what is this? Mm-hmm. it's the end scene where like you know Imogen is like we just decided we'd be better off as friends and Harry's like what and she goes I just think I can do better and like brushes it off and whatever so and the song is like longing for someone and like like intense longing for someone and I mean that's really not what's going on in this scene but I was like oh my god it's what Nick is feeling because I mean, he's already sort of vocalized like, no, I really like you. And now that he's established that he and Charlie are a thing, he feels comfortable to have those longing feelings, even if he still has to like have a mask on in front of the people he hangs out with. I'm not going to say his friends because not all of them are his friends anymore, clearly. But she pushes those feelings that she had for him away. Like they're irrelevant. And she decides to silently, I mean, we see silently actually become an ally to him and really like be supportive. Um, Personally, I wish that we got more even if it was like that communicate the communication like I get it Nick like I see you I hear you whatever you need I wish we got more of that eye contact or those those words Mm -hmm. between them instead of them sort of like hanging out seeing it from Tao's perspective being like oh like he's going out with this girl like why are you hanging around him like there's clearly more to this than them just sitting next to each other. And I want that. I hope we'll get that in season two. I really want it. I want a lot mm-hmm. of things. I want more of the, I mean, obviously I want more Tara and Darcy, but I really wish that we also could have seen them like theorizing, like, is Nick queer? Is Nick going out with Charlie? <laughs> And then, like, the, oh, my God, I knew it, when, like, she's, when uh, Elle says that she has a crush on Tao, like, I wanted those conversations where they're, like, sitting together and being like, do you think, do you think, how much do you want to bet? Oh, my God, we should totally find out. Let's, like, be meddling gays and try and figure it out. <laughs> like, Sounds like a good uh, fanfic side story kind of thing. Because, like, let's be yeah. real here. When Tara goes, when Nick goes, actually, we're going out. She goes, are you? It's like, she's like. <laughs> oh, she knew. Oh, yeah. Everyone knew. Yeah, but Tara, like, legitimately from the moment that Nick opened his mouth at the party was like, <laughs> oh, one of us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then would, like, run over to Darcy and be like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. my God. We have to get this out of him. Also, Nicolette, just so you know, Imogen is not in the comics. No. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she was introduced for the show. So, yeah. Imogen and Isaac. Uh-huh. But yeah. Isaac is very similar to another character th- in the comic that did not make it into the show. Okay. But it adds an interesting, like, difference, you know. It yeah. does. Yeah. Uh-huh. But that's why I think we'll get. I think we're going to get a lot more Imogen in season two just because they've got it's yeah. time to flesh her character out now mm-hmm. that she's been you know, introduced. That, that knowing look that she gives. Oh, yeah. At the, yeah. At the very yes. last. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like, uh, she's like, OK, pieces are. OK. Yeah. There's there's a lot to Imogen. Yeah. Um, she's like, <laughs> oh, OK, yeah, that, I get it. And I'm and I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. And she's like, all, she oh, looks so happy. Yeah. too. She's like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. yeah 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 it's like she just wants the boy she likes to be happy yeah because he's more than that they're friends too yeah. she's such a good friend yeah uh girls only has two songs in it yeah which is why i really didn't have much to say i love flirting with her i think that they use it I, really I well. do too yeah i i think flirting with her is great and like after listening to the full song The part that they chose is like, that's the perfect part of the song to use for the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
I agree 100% because, yeah, when I listened to the whole song, I was like, where's... Yeah, this, this I'm like, where like, is that part? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that scene is also like, it sort of puts everything together between like Tara and Darcy's relationship. Mm -hmm. At least for me, I didn't really like understand at first what was going, like what their dynamic was with like how comfortable they were with like not being in the closet, but like, you know, not being public. Mm -hmm. And as I watched the show for the last couple of days, getting ready for this um, recording, I was like, oh, like when they're about to kiss, Tara's the one who like nods her head like Darcy's you can tell Darcy's been the one that's like whenever you're ready whenever mm -hmm. you're ready because I'm ready which is a lovely healthy relationship to have but it's very much like this is the one thing that like really comes to light that like she has not really even been comfortable with the vocabulary she hasn't really been comfortable with being out and this is like the climax to that. Yeah. yeah. We we talked a lot about that in our episode on it, which isn't out yet. But I, it's yeah. Darcy's been out for a while and Tara's not out. And we also know from the comics that Darcy's family is not accepting. So she has to deal with this like at school, at home. So she's like built up this hard exterior around it. She's like, none of it phases her. And Tara's much more emotional about it and it things do get to her in a way that they don't mm -hmm. get to Darcy anymore and this is the moment where Darcy realizes how much Tara's struggling with everything mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. starts to be like oh I need to really be there for her mm -hmm. so. that's really good to know that's really good to know because mm -hmm. like I said I always want more of Tara and Darcy and so yes now I have to read the comics mm -hmm. yeah so I can get more of them read them read them read I feel them. like the side characters quote unquote um are a bit more fleshed out in the comics like you do get a little bit more I think um at least as far along into it as I've gotten I haven't finished it or anything um or finished the amount that's out but I do feel like you get to know the other characters a little better, I think, in the comic. The the like most recent chapters are very like Nick and Charlie focused, but definitely throughout the rest of it, um, there's a lot more of the side characters. I was I was kind of like looking through because I realized that Secret only has two songs and Girls only has two songs. And those are my two least favorite episodes. Oh. And they're my least favorite for different reasons, but I just found it interesting that those are also the episodes with the least amount of music. I don't mm. know if there's a correlation there, but mm. I just noticed it and I felt it worth noting. <laughs> I don't have either of the songs from Secret on my list. Yeah. No. For standing out. Yeah, no, they're, they're just kind of there. Like, what's it going to be is fun, but mm -hmm. it doesn't like stand out to me in any way. Unlike some of the songs from Bully. Yep. That's a really hard episode. It's really hard. <laughs> it is. It is. But the only song that I really have on there um, is Tired. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that, you know, that's that's pretty much a given. It's perfect. And when I was getting ready for this recording, I was really like, okay, like, but how is it perfect? And it's so perfect because like we've all had that like I don't want to assume but have we all had that sort of look when we get up and we don't want to go somewhere because we're like dreading we know how it's going to make us feel mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we just know oh, yeah. that it's going to be toxic we know we're going to feel like shit and that face like hit me yeah mm -hmm. there, there have been so many times with like different jobs that I've had where like I've had that face because I just know like the last time we saw Tori and Charlie on the bus they were talking mm -hmm. like a lot mm -hmm. and it was lovesick <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh my god but like this one like he's like staring out the window he's he has his headphones in that's never a good sign mm -hmm. especially when you're usually talking to someone 
never a good sign. And he doesn't really say anything like bye to her or anything. Mm -hmm. And my theory is that, you know, Tori knows what's going on. Yes. She's really close with her brother. And, you know, that's really special. She knows that this is, you know, starting, but I don't think she really says anything until boyfriend. I mean, and as an older sibling, I, I think this is very possible that she's sort of like waiting it out, sort of being like, you know, hopefully it's not so bad this time. Like, you know, he went through it before. I'm sure I have confidence. I love him. I have faith in him. But when she realizes, you know, it's bad, then she's going to say something. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is that we need to get Nicolette not only to read the Heartstopper comics, but also Solitaire. Solitaire, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Solitaire is from Tori's point of view, and it's about two years after the events of, like, what's going on in Heartstopper. Mm -hmm. It's also where Nick and Charlie came from. Wow. So, yeah. But, Nicolette, you would really enjoy the Osmondverse in its entirety, I think. I feel like I would, especially, like, after really, like, deep diving into this show more than I really like ever thought I would so Mm -hmm. thank you for that (laughs) so out of all the perfect songs I think this is the most perfect yeah for me I feel like it just like is not it's just Charlie's inner monologue it's just what he's Mm -hmm. thinking Mm -hmm. it's just I'm getting really fucking tired and yeah it's Mm -hmm. just the song is just kind of as it plays in the show it's just telling us what he's thinking Mm-hmm. And if we could just not talk about any other way, that would be great because That's, that song okay. is so Kills fucking me. sad. It's an yeah. auto skip for me just because it makes me so, so sad. sad. Me too. Yeah. Yep. It's great in context, but it's just sad. Yep. Yep. We don't. We don't need to do it. I mean, that's how <laughs> I feel just... about our window too. Like I just skip it. Yeah. Yes. Same. Um. The next song that I want to talk about is "Close to You." Same. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> did you have some before yes i did um because i love you oh uh, yeah mm-hmm. um I, I just like it because as the beats person i thought it was cute and then i listened to the mixtape and i'm not ashamed to say that while i was like walking down the sidewalk i was absolutely partially dancing <laughs> to this song. and in the and in my yes. teeny tiny grocery store down like you know the super skinny hallways <laughs> or aisles i'm like i'm like uh-huh because i love you like <laughs> absolutely i love this song yeah it's got a good like little dance beat I love it. But then I got more into the lyrics too. And I mean, it's about like how no one understands why these two people are together. And it's like, I don't really care what you think because I care about this person. And I mean, that's pretty relevant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But let's cheer for Charlie beating that asshole Ben. Yeah. Oh, that was so satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So satisfying. Um. You wanted to talk about uh, Close to You? Yeah, it's just, it's one that always stands out to me. Um, I like, I like the, you know, like the beat and the lyrics. It's fun. It's like, I, I like a lot of the montage songs. I think that they work really well. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like the sports day montage. Yeah. Um, and there's always the moment that stands out to me where like everyone's like clapping along to the beat <laughs> a little bit <laughs> of the song. Um, and it just, I, it's, I feel like it's worth noting just for that little moment alone. Um, especially because this is the like most supportive, like field day event that I've ever yeah, witnessed. Right? <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and so that, that, uh, when I was rewatching it today, um, that, that was a big standout to me, but nowhere near as much as the last two songs. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Then we get to moment in the sun. And then I just cry for the rest of the episode. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, uh. The happy ending that is moment in the sun is just, uh, yes. where they finally, like, I, I talked about, like, you know, how Nick felt comfortable having feelings, but this is like, you're safe. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're safe to feel, you both are safe <laughs> to feel your feelings. <laughs> Okay, will you guys cry if 
I say a lyric that I pulled out of the song? Probably. Yes, but, do but it. like I'm already <laughs> crying. So <laughs> okay, sweet, sweet. Um, so it was everything I've dreamed about is coming on. Trade it for a moment in the sun. All the other noise is just a waste of time. You're the only music on my mind. I don't need money. I don't need to be cool. I trade it for a moment in the sun with you. I'm like happy ending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, yeah, we're going to get seasons two and three and that's wonderful. But like, yeah, they didn't leave us with like one of those cliffhangers where we would all just like become horizontal. Yeah. (laughs) No longer. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's like it's a nice sort of wrap. But, but like with a an ellipses at the end, which I think yeah. is nice. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important for Alice because they've said several times like they're Nick and Charlie will have a happy ending. So like not yes. knowing if they were going to get a season two, I think it was really important for them to make sure that season one ended like with them having like a complete cycle in case mm-hmm. there was nothing else. Um, it's a good thing that I knew that. Before I read Nick and Charlie, Roll. because <laughs> I don't even want to talk about Nick and Charlie. Okay, no, no. <laughs> all right, let's not. Let's not. Um, ugh. that I get emotional just even thinking about it. And like, yeah. there's an audio version of it, and so there's like little clips of it all over TikTok, and like even I can't even hear those. Even even the happy sound bites. I'm like, no, I know what that's yeah. from. Get it away from me. <laughs> <sighs> it. It it's it fucks me up, um. But yeah, mm-hmm. and then we end the series or the season with "I belong in your arms," yeah. which is just so perfect, and it's so like it's, it's it sounds like sunshine. Yes, it's perfect. It's happy yeah. and it's hopeful, and everything is just right. This is how the world should be. It really is because it's like. It's this just like flashback of all of these moments from throughout the show. And then it goes back to the beach and they're just like, and Char- like Charlie's in Nick's arms. And it's like, yeah. yes, this is where you belong. Yeah. Really holding him tight too. And he just goes like, so we're going to tell people. And he's and so like- happy. And Nick is so happy. And I'm sobbing tears of joy. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So we got through the entire season. It only took us two days. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Talk about the sound effects or not the sound effects. The score. score. The score, which I only have a couple of notes on that. But one of them, there is one part of the score and it's it's just like a tiny sound effect, but it's like the you know the long like wah uh huh mm. like you know that yeah mm-hmm. that is what I am coining the heart stopper sound yes like so yes like, I agree like, and this is they're like and this is your cue for your heart to stop yes hundred <laughs> percent agree mm-hmm. yeah and yes. did we notice that it didn't happen when Ben and charlie first kissed yes oh yeah and it happened it happened a little bit when ben and charlie kissed the second time but not enough and my theory is because charlie was trying to like force himself Mm -hmm. to be Mm -hmm. okay with the situation even though he Mm -hmm. wasn't and so it was like a tiny tiny, but it wasn't there guess when else it happens when Tao and El almost kiss. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I, it, I was it's like... such a tease because they like the actors are like going for it and you think it's gonna happen and the sound uh-huh. effect comes in and it doesn't happen. Yeah. And it's like throw everything. <laughs> they had to leave one thing untied for season two. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. it was like season two Tao and Earl. Um the composer's name is Eddie Esker Chase. Yeah, I noticed mm-hmm. that. Good job. <laughs> We love you. Yeah. Killed it. Yeah. Really good job setting the tone for the yeah. show. Yes. And yeah. That's that's what I was going to say is that it's like whimsical and playful. And like every time that it gets used, even in the like heavier moments, th- it makes you feel the exact intended emotion. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. like nail on the head. And I there's a YouTube yeah. compilation that plays through all of them in order too. 
Um, so I'll link that in nice. the notes. So you can just also just listen Thank to you. all of the score. Yes. I also wanted to talk about the self-deprecation part of the score. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Mm-hmm. The dun 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 mm-hmm. dun dun dun. The like yeah. Charlie Charlie's anxiety brain part yes. of the score. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I saw that as like that only happens really when he's having memories or like having thoughts of no one actually likes me. So it is sort of that, like, you like me, you like me because he needs someone to tell him Mm -hmm. because his brain, if you don't tell him, his brain is going to spiral. But even when you do tell him. Yeah. Yes. So like it happens when he has like the memories of Ben because Ben never really said like, you know, I like you. He kind of just like right kissed him whenever. Um, but it happens too when Nick says, or when he thinks that Nick is gonna say, sorry, I'm straight, we should just be friends. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, This is never I'm never actually gonna be happy. I never thought this would happen to me. <laughs> I know. Banished. <laughs> and when Nick says me neither. Ah. Okay. So I have a question for everyone, and I have a a lot of answers to this question. So I'm sure that everyone else does too. Mm -hmm. So thinking forward to season two, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. artists or songs you can kind of like, whichever, are on your wish list for the soundtrack for season two? Y'all know I'm going to say Muna, right? Muna's on my list too. I'm also, yeah, (laughs) Muna's on my list. Muna, maybe some Haley Kyoko, but Ooh, that would no, be definitely good. Muna. And let's be real here. I thought Muna. And then I texted you guys about how I was today years old when I found out that there was a Tara and Darcy mixtape. And <laughs> yeah. what is, hold on, I got to find <laughs> which fourth Silk Chiffon by Muna is fourth yeah. on this list. I'm like, Okay, so is this like, this is happening, right? Is this like telling the future that Muna <laughs> is going to be well, in season two? That, that also transitions quite well into the next person that I would love to hear on the soundtrack, which is Phoebe Bridgers. Mm. Yes. And not to spoil anything, but with some of the mental health stuff that starts happening with Charlie in season in yeah. what's going to be season two, motion sickness. Um, yeah. Yeah a bunch of her songs but like motion sickness yeah um like it would be great or yeah can we just have silk chiffon can we just have silk chiffon yes can we do yeah, that? yes that's <laughs> honestly honestly if um if tara if we get to see tara and darcy make out again i want silk chiffon yeah um okay i do want to go back to what you said about the mental health mm-hmm. stuff that we're going to be getting in season two somebody who i thought would be good is Peach PRC, I love the way that she sings and writes about mental health. And so I think, especially because a lot of her stuff is upbeat, but then she has like acoustic versions out. So like mm-hmm. a lot of like the acoustic version of like heavy could be really good or even symptomatic. But I just felt like she would be a really good fit with some of the themes we're going to be getting. Okay, somebody make a playlist of all of these songs that they want in season (laughs) two so that I can listen. Because I've not heard of any Uh of these people. Like I said, I live under a rock and I literally (laughs) just listen to Lights and BTS like 99% of the time if I'm not listening to the Heart Stopper like soundtrack. (laughs) Uh, Mm -hmm. Um, But also on the subject of the like mental health stuff and also this is on my list the one that i think is the most realistic um dodi do you guys know dodi because if you don't know dodi you are not living so (laughs) dodi started out as like a youtube musician Uh uh-huh and like she's incredible i love her she's got like three eps and an album and guess who is in her tour band or look garland Ooh. So, Orla Gartland is one of her best friends. So I'm like, if anyone, yeah, like Dodie is like the top of my list. And I can think of like four songs off the top of my head. You has like such like Paris trip vibes. Um, when is amazing, like, and then like half of their new album. 
Dodie would be an amazing addition to the Heartstopper soundtrack. You guys would also all love her. She's amazing. She's like got a very similar like vibe to a lot of the the music that's already on the soundtrack. So I thought that she would be great. And also not for nothing. I I feel like there's some genuine youngs that would work well. Yeah, (laughs) true. Um, Uh, Why didn't I think of Jenny Owen Youngs? Yeah, I should have thought of her. I, I mean, her sound is a little different, but it could hit right if it was used correctly. Yeah. And like, depending on the song that they picked. Yeah. I I was kind of like toying in my brain with like, which songs of hers I would want, but ooh, Little Bird might work. Something like that. I feel that. like any of the Night Shift songs could fit. Mm, yeah. Um, but also, Colors of You was not used in season one. It That's was used true. in the teaser or the trailer. Mm-hmm. I think it was the teaser, not the trailer, the shorter one. But they didn't actually use it in the show. And I think that especially with it being from Nick's perspective and we know that he's going to come out soon. I think that it is it has a high likelihood of of working really well. Uh, I feel like that song would make a really good Paris montage. Yes. Yes. See? Yes. Yeah. When I saw the official mixtape and I saw Colors of You on there, I was like, did I miss something? (laughs) <laughs> and every time until now i was like do i have to go back and watch it and really like listen for this song but it's real it's not it's in one of the trailers yeah, yeah it's because okay. there's two of them on netflix that you can like rewatch at the end of the season and i watched them recently and was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> okay mm-hmm. but yeah no i do agree that you know in some part of him coming out it would be a really good idea to use it Mm -hmm. i could get into some specific stuff in paris but i'm not going to because (laughs) same no not right now not right now la 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 (laughs) um and then i have to like stretch like there's no way it's gonna happen but i would love for it to happen but i think that their sounds would work really so harry styles and Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like, there's no way that they have the budget for that, but... <laughs> Maybe. I they mean, might. season one did really, really well. It continues yeah. to do well because we all keep rewatching it. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You know, so... Yes, I spent a, a very long time trying to think of what Taylor Swift song or songs I would want in season two. And saying Paris feels too easy. Yeah. But Ashley and I, when Midnight's came out, we spent like two hours so just texting many. back and forth. Like, <laughs> this song would be a great Nick and Charlie song. This is such a good song. I mean, there's snow on the beach. Glitch. I mean, I could I could rattle them off for... We can do a whole episode about You're them, You're on honestly. your own, kid. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. So those are... those. That's kind of my wish list is Dodie, Jenny O'Neill Young's Muna, Taylor Swift, Harry Styles. <laughs> That's that's a bigger list than mine. It was just mine was just Muna and Haley Kyoko. Mm-hmm. That's, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm surprised that there's not any Haley Kyoko. Like it didn't like click in my brain until you said that you wanted it for season two. I was like, yeah, there's not any. And it seems like yeah. one of those artists that would be on there. But mm-hmm. um, so now we get to talk about Baby Queen. Oh my god, which we went to mm-hmm. with Nicolette. Yes, yeah. we did. So. Ashley texted me how long before the show? Like a couple weeks. I mean, it, the it, show. It, that's when it was announced. I literally texted you the day it was yeah. announced, and I was like, <laughs> "I'm going." I listen, people who are in New York City. <laughs> I'm gonna be going to this yeah. show. So if anybody's interested, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so she texted me and was like, "One, are you familiar with Heartstopper? <laughs> Two are you familiar with baby queen? And I was like, <laughs> heart stopper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, but do I know? But I was like, but do I know who baby queen is? No. no. <laughs> and, and without explicitly saying, do you want to go to the show with me? She said, well, I'm going to the show. <laughs> and I was like, she's like, it's in Brooklyn and I live in Brooklyn. So I'm like, are you asking me if I want to go? Because fuck yes I want to go it's a concert and I get to see you (laughs) you know of course I'm gonna go and we ended up having an incredible time oh my god that was like that was the coolest show and I mean we've all been to like a a lot of shows yeah Yeah. that was 
the coolest show yeah i have ever been to it i'm sorry my chemical romance because that was <laughs> an amazing show that topped my chemical romance it was so good that's what i said too like because like i was like already going to be in new york city the week after that for an event <laughs> and so it was like am i really going to go to new york city for one night a week before I'm going to go to New York City. <laughs> like, is this really what I'm doing? <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, it is because I can't like, I literally, yeah, I was like, and I, have I also, to go. I didn't help. <laughs> I didn't help. Cause I was like, you can stay with me. <laughs> but also you were like, I can't, that's a school night. And I was like, damn. And then like 15 minutes later, you were like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not only was it a school night, it was the first, first day night. of school. <laughs> It was the first day of school, um, which was very worth it, though. It was very Super, worth it. Yeah. Oh, my um, God. It was it so was like cool. a Thursday night. Yeah. Um, at a tiny, tiny little venue. And like I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it. I knew that I was going to have a good time. Like I knew mm-hmm. it was going to be good. I did not expect it to be one of the best shows I've ever been to. Like it, it blew yeah. me away. And a lot of it was like, first of all, they her band sounded great. She sounded phenomenal and the in pretty much the entire room was like queer people. So the vibe was just so yeah. fucking good. It was so good. And like, I don't know, there was just good energy in the room. And so th- the entire show was just like from beginning to end, even the opener, the opener was so good. Elliot Lee. Yeah. Mm-hmm who you know they were so good I had no idea who they were and they came out and blew my fucking mind mm-hmm. and I'm seeing them again they're coming to Nashville in like two weeks and I'm seeing them at, a, at oh another tiny venue so uh I'm oh pretty stoked about it I am so jealous because after that show I binge listen to Elliot yeah. and me and so, so good and then I looked back at like you know all the videos I took and I was like they played upside down yeah. they played weird uh mess boy yeah. I was like oh my and they were so good their voices didn't the really microphone good. cut out too a little bit and they were like yep. I'm just gonna keep going yep yeah just fine <laughs> um tv head is my favorite Elliot Lee song TV head is exactly how I fucking feel (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh see I really love upside down because it just is has such a good beat yeah weird I love weird weird is good too yeah weird made my I wrote down Mm -hmm. my top four which is TV head mess boy weird and five four three two one Five four three two one is my top. I also really love Pink Freak. Yeah, I Um, like. That's the problem is that I love all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that show was really fun, and it was also just like Ashley and I got there kind of early, and we were online, and like the person in front of us had like hand embroidered heart stopper leaves onto a yeah. Fjall Raven backpack. And it was so cool. And there was someone wearing one of the Sebastian Croft queer was always here shirts. Mm-hmm. And like, you could tell it was just like a bunch of people who discovered baby queen through heart stopper. Yeah. Everyone was just like, so like excited. And it was, I mean, I love like a tiny, like 300 yeah, person standing room only show, um, like more than a stadium show. Yes. <laughs> For, even though my feet hurt at the end of it. Yeah. It was so much fun and just like, yeah, it was just, it was really, really cool. One thing about it that I really like remember was Baby Queen went up to like audience members and said like, yeah, what's your name? What was it? What's your name? Where are you from? And it was just like a fact about yourself or something. Yeah. And they were, there were people who were like, my name's this and I'm like bisexual or I'm pansexual or I'm gay or, and the the way the whole room would just, just like screamed every time. It didn't matter what it was. It didn't matter how stupid then, or, uh-huh. you know, little it was. It was like, yeah, we were hyping each other up for whatever yes. the person was saying. And then that was the segue into narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> so then we're all just <laughs> screaming. I'm a fucking yeah. narcissist. 
Oh but my also gosh. during that was when she realized like how many people were saying like, oh, and I'm also bisexual. She, she did like a whole highlight where she was like, okay, how many people in this room are bisexual? And it was most of the room. Yes. <laughs> it was most of the room. I was like, this is the most bi people I've ever been around in my life. And it's yeah. great. And it's great because Baby Queen's lyrics are so good for just like screaming in a room full yes. of people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also she played Lazy. Yeah. It was out. Mm-hmm. So good. Uh, it was just so much fun. That's one of my favorites. And yes. Oh, have you listened to the piano version? Yes, I have. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> one of my other highlights was when she played um, These Drugs, there was <gasps> that kid that was like really <laughs> fucked up in front of us and like oh, yeah I I just like you know we're all having a good time and I get it I've been there so I just like let him lean on me and we had like a whole moment during these drugs where we were like <laughs> singing and oh, dancing together God. and like we were making eye contact and singing the lyrics and I like gave him some of my water out of my heart stopper water bottle like <laughs> <laughs> it was a highlight of the show. It's very sweet of you. <laughs> oh my God. You just unlocked that memory where I was yes. like, who is this guy? And then it just became okay. And, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> and you were giving him your fan. Like, yeah. yeah. Was like here, have some electric fan. And then he went to the bathroom and I never saw him again. Oh no. <laughs> he didn't make it back. I put a call out on Twitter. I was like, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got home safely. Yeah. And she did Colors of You, and she, like, took the flag mm-hmm. from the audience and, like, wrapped wrapped herself up in it. Oh, so good. Dover Beach and Want Me was the encore. And there was that guy, because she, like, before Want Me, I love that. I think about it every time that Want Me yeah. comes on, on, like, my Spotify, mm-hmm. where she's like, I have a question. She's like, I have a question for you guys. And this one guy just in the back of the, like, room is just like, we want you. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> it's great that was a really fun show yeah mm-hmm. thank you guys for joining us and for doing this episode because it was a lot of fun to have y'all on yeah yeah <laughs> so much fun I really enjoyed it thank you so much for having us like Cass I'd never met mm-hmm. you before but you're wonderful and same to you I was Nicolette just, yeah, <laughs> thank you um I, this was like very unexpected when you asked me and I was like, oh my God, yay. Yeah, I've been waiting for this. I've been so excited. Yeah. Like me, me in the chat, like bugging you guys. Like, so <laughs> when are we doing so when? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, March now. Are we doing it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That just about wraps us up for today. And of course, this is a bi-weekly podcast by two bisexuals so we will be back in two weeks for our season one wrap up ah! if you want to follow us online we are at why are we cast on all platforms and if you like this please consider rating and reviewing and until next time bye bye bye, bye. bye.